Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, a very biased collection as usual. Um, today a theorem which is quite nice, it actually has a really uh, kind of weirdish name, whatever, I will comment on the name later. For now it's just uh, the Garden of Eden theorem, whatever that means, we'll see. Um, but what I would call it is that there are certain, well, configurations, certain things that are just ignored by life. Life doesn't can't do anything. It's not doing everything you want. It's not sometimes you're just ignored by life. We'll see what that means. So stay with me here on this one. It's kind of a fun. So as I said, I will explain the name uh, later on. Right now, at least when I first saw this, it was like, oh, what on earth is the theorem about? Theorem kind of tells me that it's probably in mass or something related to mass. It's more like intersection between logic, mass, and computer science here. Um, but still pretty much a very adorable, but kind of a name is a bit. We'll comment on the name later on. Okay, so it's related to Conway's Game of Life. And I will show you Conway's Game of Life in a second, kind of in a really beautiful, so you can play it online yourself. Uh, in, I will show you the, the website. So play Game of Life. Um, and it's kind of a really cool idea. And it's it kind of the blueprint example of what people call a cellular automata. And it's the following idea, uh, the Conway's game of life itself will run on a on a two by two grid. So something like this, infinite in all directions. And um, there will be states and the states will change every second, let's say. And uh, the state of one of the, well, uh, just grid parts here, one of the alcoves in the grid is determined by what is going around it in the following way. So let's say you have a cell, uh, it's always the middle cell, the yellow one here, and it has very few neighbors, then the cell will die. So this is supposed to model life in a very, very naive way, of course. But anyway, so um, just think about a human population. Um, so if there's human and there are not many other humans to well, support you, you eventually will die. So that's kind of the first rule. If you have one or no neighbors in this little blue part here, so neighbors is really just everything kind of around, uh, then you die. Well, it's just, that's life, I guess. Uh, that's a part of life. Anyway, um, and if there are too many, then you will die as well, I guess. It's overpopulation or whatever. So if you have uh, four or more neighbors, like in this little configuration, you'll die as well, right? So die just means I erase the little cell. And the interesting thing is there will be some kind of balancing so if there are two or three neighbors, it's kind of the right setting. You have enough people to support you, but not too many competition when it comes for food or something or resources or whatever, then you survive. So if you have two or three neighbors, you survive. And well, human population is, as soon as you throw in enough humans uh, in some space, they will multiply. I can guarantee you that. And here's a multiplication rule. If you are an empty cell, so you're, you're not alive yet, uh, but you have a certain number of neighbors, then the neighbors will do whatever neighbors do in this multiplication setting, and you will come to life. That's kind of this balancing between some things will die, some things will live. And in the illustration, while well, it's kind of a, a zero or one, right? A life or dead. In the illustration, we will go for, um, yeah, black being alive. Uh, or I think it's actually yellow, yellow being alive, sometimes it's black and white, so yellow and whatever the background will be. So let's have a look at the game of life. So here's the website, it's called Play Game of Life, which is a really good name, also linked in the description in case you can't spell Play Game of Life. Um, anyway, so point is here, you can kind of set up an initial state and the rules are the rules. So the rules are the local rules we had before, you could set up an initial state here, whatever. And then you can get it started and it will do something uh, depending on, and now it stops, now it's frozen. Well, reset, clear. Um, here's another state. We could start with something like this, start, and it will nicely alternate. Why will this alternate? Let me just stop it. Well, the middle cell has two neighbors, so it survives. This cell has just one neighbor, so it dies. Same for the other cell, but this cell here has three neighbors, so it will come to life. And same for this cell. So it just alternates uh, back and forth. And kind of the point is you can kind of create very nice patterns here. There you go. Uh, and it's a little bit random. Um, so kind of the point is here, now, now we have a period, 
again. Okay, let's stop it. Let's put in maybe here another one and see what happens. Uh, oh, now it's completely dead. Uh, very, very sad. Reset. Um, it's just completely dead. Let's put in another one here. Uh, it dies completely. So kind of the point is depending on the initial configuration, it's kind of random what will happen in a certain sense, like life is. Like life is, well, determined by certain rules, so it's not random in any strict sense, but it's certainly kind of very unpredictable what happens. So here's one of my favorite configurations. I already did that before. Um, so we'll start with this one, and this one has a nice period. Uh, which this alternates around all the time, and it's pretty beautiful. Pop, 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 and there you go. And then it goes back and back and back and forth and just repeats itself. Cool. So that's Conway's game of life. It's kind of modeling life, if you want, and I will just call it life. Um, I said again, it's not random. There are some very, very specific rules here, but depending on the starting position, the initial configuration, it's kind of very hard to guess what's going on. And kind of the point I would like to address here is this ignored by life question. So is actually everything possible? So depending on your initial configuration, will everything eventually show up? So every type of pattern you can imagine in this grid here. So will you be able to see uh, everything? It's kind of, a, kind of a natural question. You can ask that for any cellular automata. What is a cellular automata? Exactly the same, but you're allowed to uh, vary the rules. You can make it one dimensional. You can make it three dimensional. You can have different rules or whatever. So that's in general a cellular automata and Conway's game of life is kind of the the interest, most interesting one in some sense, uh, certainly historically one of the first. Um, the most interesting is actually something else. We'll see that later. But anyway, um, so it's kind of this mixture between randomness and a controlled kind of life type thing. It's kind of pretty beautiful. Play it yourself. Remember, play game of life. Um, anyway, so there are some easy patterns we have seen. This one here, that was my little pattern. This is the one with period uh, 15. I, I used a different starting pattern than, than the one you saw, but uh, well, since, since it's periodic, I can use anything you want. We had this one here, which was alternating between this and this operation. Um, and we have not seen any of the others as far as I know, uh, but they are so, they're, they're patterns that are just fixed. So if I have a block, nothing will happen or whatever. And they are patterns and move, and so they're kind of easy to describe. Um, but what we're really interested in are kind of big patterns kind of behave randomly and I wonder or we wonder what you can actually say about them. What, so what can we say about large patterns that are kind of reasonably uh, random in this game of life or in general in any cellular automata? And the interesting patterns, at least for this video, and now comes name, are the so-called gardens of Eden. So what is a garden of Eden? A garden of Eden so here are examples of gardens of Edens, and that's really difficult to show that these are examples of gardens of Edens. Anyway, so a garden of Eden is a configuration which no processor, so it cannot occur. It cannot occur ever in the game of life unless it's your initial state, right? Your initial state is free. You can just put it as an initial state. That's fine, but it cannot occur kind of as uh, in the game itself. And that's why it's somehow called Garden of Eden. You might like the name, you might not like the name anyway, but it's kind of um, related to this creation out of nowhere, right? It's kind of the initial state, the God-given state, if you want. Or in this case, because I was just clicking, and I'm certainly very far away from being anything than a human, um, a human-given state. Anyway, um, so no, just the initial state. It can be an in initial state, but nothing else. And just think about it for a second. It's really not easy to show, for example, that this top one here can never arise, no matter what other states, initial states you have. You kind of need to show that. So this kind of a, was a long-term question, open question, so kind of solved a long time ago. Um, but it's still a lot of fun involved. And what people then did is they thought about kind of a more abstract approach to this problem. And that's where the Garden of Eden theorem comes into the game. It's this idea of existence of those patterns. So in particular, since these two are gardens of Edens, garden of Eden, uh, let me try again, gardens of Eden, very complicated. Um, there is well, usually just one. That's why my brain has so much problem to just have multiple of them. But in principle, you have multiple. We actually have 
quite a few. Anyway, that's where the theorem comes in. Um, so the Garden of Eden theorem is a cellular automata, any cellular automata has a Garden of Eden, if and only if it has twins and uh, just the existence. So here are more gardens of e gardens of Eden. Ugh, this will not work out in this video anymore. So bear with me here. Um, anyway, so twins are much easier to check. Um, so twins are two patterns. So it's kind of here's pattern one and here's pattern two. Um, and they exist in two different universes. But if you exchange them, the overall behavior of the system doesn't change. These are called twins. Some local configurations, you can completely exchange them and um, you, you kind of will never change the future configurations. And that's kind of much easier to check than um, whether you have gardens of Edens because it, it's kind of really difficult to say that something will not arise uh, no matter what you do. But this is kind of this existence theorem and it works for any cellular automata. So having twins is sometimes called locally injective. So let me just say injective and having uh, gardens of Edens is called surjective, right? Surjective, yes, you are not ignored by life. Every configuration will appear. Injective, uh, kind of, you don't have this exchange property. And this is saying that a uh, cellular automata is injective if and only if it is surjective. Well, that's kind of a, a very nice theorem, which you can then use, for example, of course, to apply it to a Conway's game of life. And you will note that life will ignore certain patterns. So certain patterns will not appear in life. And in general, this is a kind of difficult problem for uh, general cellular automata. So in higher dimensions, this is essentially an undecidable problem and you can kind of, kind of show that. So in dimension one, it's a bit boring, but uh, otherwise it's really, really difficult. So that theorem is actually quite cool. And you might wonder whether this is kind of always true. And no, it's not. So yes, maybe the even better, the more famous, or certainly one of the most famous uh, cellular automata, which is called Rule 90. Rule 90. I'm not going to explain what Rule 90 is, but here's a picture from Rule 90. Rule 90 just says there's a certain number of rules. You can just vary the rules I showed you before for the Conway's Game of Life. And this was the 90s one people tried. And turns out that rule 90 is just a kind of really fun one. It's really kind of the random one. And in a random one, you would expect that everything will appear, right? That what makes it random. So in some sense, game of life is not random because not everything appears. And this one is random and everything will appear. So this one has no gardens of Edens. Gardens of Eden this is not going to work out, but we're almost done, don't worry. So Gardens of Eden, and yeah, so it's really just saying this one is quite random. It's just everything that can occur will occur eventually. And this is kind of, you can check that by using uh, the corresponding Garden of Eden theorem. Anyway, so what, I'm what I was trying to say today is, let's just be very brave here and just say Conway's game of life is life. Well, whether that's true or not, I leave that uh, decision to you. Um, but if it's life, that's kind of in life, you won't see old patterns. So life is not random. This is essentially saying life is not random. In contrast to rule 90, rule 90 is uh, pretty random. Um, anyway, so it was about these gardens of Eden's slightly different, strange name, which is this creation out of nowhere um, idea. So things that can only appear as an initial state. So uh, me clicking in this game of life, uh, online version of the game of life and just placing it wherever I want to place it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.